Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available, pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. Welcome to the Tinley Park Chamber of Commerce Cable TV Show. As many of you already know, my name is Joe Ficaro. I am a past board member a, and a past president of the chamber uh, and, and happy to say that I am the current uh, executive director. Um, <laughs> I'm starting off really good, aren't I? Uh, well, we're happy to have with us uh, as our first guest, um, I would say a long time chamber member and uh, a current board member. We have with us Jay Lindbergh, uh, an Allstate, from Allstate Insurance, Jay Lindbergh Agency. Um, and, and Jay is a member of the board of directors as well. A actually, Jay is the vice president of the uh, board of directors. Well, thank you, Joe. Yes. I think I got all that straight. I think you You know, did. I like your tie so much, uh, your tie rather, it's kind of th thrown me off a little bit. So you can leave that behind when you leave. Okay. So, well, Jay, welcome to our show. Thanks, Joe. Good to and, be here again. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of changes in insurance. Uh, some things remain the same and stable, uh, especially with a large company uh, like Allstate. And you've been an agent for... Uh, About five years now. Five years? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I made the uh, career now, change. So. You did? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, would you elaborate on that? All right. Uh, back about five years ago, I was uh, working for AT&T. And when I was working for AT&T, I was one of the people that was, um, shall we say, um, laid off. Downsized. Downsized. That's yeah. probably a better term. And uh, because of that, uh, needing um, to make income and uh, support my family, I had the opportunity to purchase uh, an all-state agency right here in Tinley Park. Um, my son, uh, Blake, and I run the agency. And Hopefully, when I back out, my son will take over the agency. So, all right, yeah. yeah. And Blake, I think he's representing the, your your agency quite well. He does a very good job. Good. Well, Dad's there, uh, just to pass the baton, so to speak. That's right. That's, That's very right. good. He's got to work hard to support my uh, my habit called retirement in a couple of years. So, God bless him. God bless America. I mean, I mean really. Yeah. Um, we need to take care of our children because they will take care of us later on. And, and that, you know what, Joe? The more that I'm in insurance, I find that out. You know, it's, it's that 360-degree circle that we all talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts with us taking care of our children, but then it does turn out to be that our children take care of us. And that's, we might not like it, but that's the fact of life. And, and that's the way it, it should be. But uh, let's talk about your agency okay. and, uh, and the services and, and some of the products that you have to offer. Okay, let's do that. Um, firstly, I'm an Allstate agent uh, and I represent a major company. I picked a major company um, because we didn't want to get lost. We didn't want to get lost with a lot of promises and for companies going out of business uh, that they mm -hmm. could not support the products that they sell and everything. And I've been an Allstate customer personally for about 45 years. Uh, I've, I've been with State Farm a couple times myself, and they're a very good company, but Allstate is a very good company too, and I'm proud to represent them. In all my career, I've always represented very good company, top shelf companies. Um, we have a value proposition, and then the value proposition is you get what you pay for, and you get the coverages that you're asking for. Many times a lot of people don't realize what they have a need for until they sit down with their agent. Too many people are on the phone calling 1-800-SAVE-ME-A-BUCK. And that's all well and fine until you call and make a claim. I have one customer uh, with one of the companies that we see advertised on television in the late night. It's been nearly a year hmm. since the accident and since he had Allstate Insurance, 
we made the claim against Allstate even though the other person was covered by the other company and they yet to have even talked to my customer to start to claim. We've already paid out. That's scary for that other person. You know, it is, yeah. it is, um, because we all go out, we do business with businesses, and we want to make sure that we get something back in return, especially in an accident or in a need. And when it turns out that you go and, and you make a claim to it, you can't, you can't get a value back for it, we don't like that. So, All right. So, you know, some people think, well, you know, all insurances are the same. And we know co companies are different as well. And That's some right. of them carry categorically the same types of products. But what separates Allstate's products, let's say, from other companies? Well, Allstate, um, we're a top-tier company. And being a top-tier company, that gives us the opportunity to offer pretty much um, what we have to offer is a full uh, realm of um, not only uh, personal line insurances, but we also uh, carry business line insurances. And a lot of people don't realize that we carry business insurance. We'll touch on that in a second. But my personal lines, I, I, I was surprised. I had took this piece of paper and wrote this out, okay? And in the personal lines, uh, we have auto, we have home, rental, condo, we have motorcycle, boat, snowmobile, all-terrain vehicles, RV. We sell life insurance products, life insurance products being both term and uh, whole life products. Call me to understand that better. Um, along with those, we sell annuities, retirements, college savings plans, 401k uh, rollovers. A lot of people don't realize that your Allstate agent can do that. Um, we also have landlord policy and, and personal umbrella policies. That's just the beginning with the personal lines. We also offer business, which is business property. A lot of people don't realize we do that. Uh, we have personal, um, I'm sorry, uh, property owners, uh, business owners policies, uh, volunteer employee benefits. A lot of people don't realize that Allstate is one of the largest insurer. In fact, the Village of Tinley Park Voluntary employee benefits are written through our all-state uh, products. I wish I were the agent, but I'm not. Um, hmm. We have the business umbrella policies. We sell workman's comp. We don't only in the business insurance and in our retirement products, we don't only offer just all-state. I sell Voya, which a lot of us remember the Ing Incorporated. We're, uh, I'm licensed to sell those insurances, some MetLife products, some Prudential products, AXA products. Um, we offer the full rate, and a lot of people don't realize that. So, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but okay. we're a well, full service agency. I'm going to ask you to go on and on for a few minutes. Okay, uh, go. Now, are, are there, I, I know you and I have spoken in the past, and there are a number of things that uh, Allstate is doing to benefit our youth. Yeah, um, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm very proud as an agent, and I'm probably the only agent in Tinley Park that does it. I love my, uh, we're, we're brothers. We all work well together and everything. But I work, as you know, a lot with the community. I like to give back with what the community is giving me as a, as a business owner. Um, one uh, thing is the youth. I work with all three high schools, Tinley Park, Oak Forest, and Andrew High School. I work with their um, 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 driver's education program. Both Blake and I go and we talk in front of the driver's education class, which is understandable because, you know, the driver's ed teacher should be there to tell us how to drive the car, how to brake the car, what to do, what not to do. But with regards to the insurances, most kids, they have no idea that it's a privilege to be able to drive their dad and mom's car. And they have no idea what kind of dollars it takes in order to be able to offer that privilege. Sure. It ranges, believe it or not, anywhere from 150 to, I've seen it go as much as $1,000 every six months to add a high school student to the policy. Yeah. Pretty amazing. It's a pretty costly responsibility. Yeah, very, very much so. But it is a responsibility, and they don't realize it. We're not there yet, and we heard this the other day. Remember somebody said something at the chamber meeting that in 45 years, we're not going to be driving cars. The car is going to be driving us. We're not going to get in there. We're going to say, home, oh, James. I, you took the word right out of my mouth. Yeah, oh. you're right. So it's, it is, it's kind of fascinating. It is, yeah. very much so. 
Chris, I wonder what's going to happen to my business, but I'm sure we'll change with it. Well, Jay, we have uh, a minute left, so um, if there's something you would like to say in 40 seconds. Well, yeah, i like to say um, we're in a new location. I can't talk about where it's at. Uh, we made ourselves more visible to our customers. Please look for us. We're out there on the street. Um, please give us a call. It costs you nothing to save money. Mm -hmm. I can save a lot of money. Free quote. Just takes a minute or two of your time. Call either myself or my son, Blake. Um, and we're here to support the community. Well, I, I can tell you that uh, uh, Jay Lindbergh Agency, Allstate Agency, is here in Tinley Park. And you can reach Jay or Blake um, through the Chamber of Commerce office at 708-532-5700 or go to our website, tinleychamber.org, for our entire membership directory. Thank you. Joe, Jay, thank you. Been thank a pleasure. you very much. Well, our next guest is a, a friend of mine, I'm, I'm happy to say. I think still. Um, we'll see how the night goes. Okay. okay. But we have with us uh, Bob Haustein. Bob is an agent with uh, Remax First Service. Bob is a uh, past president of the Chamber of Commerce, current board member, and um, he is the co-chair for the sixth annual Brew and Vine Fest. We'll get into that a little bit later, but yeah. Bob, welcome to the show. Finally, we finally got you on here. I've been on it before. Well, this is a, it's a big just deal, an, though. It ended uh, badly last time. That's why you haven't been invited me back. Gosh, I don't remember that. No, I'm but, okay. Uh, I know. It was fine. Uh, yeah. But, you know, tell us just a little bit about yourself and then about uh, your your service with Remax First Service, and, and then we'll segue into the other All right, well, I, I've been selling real estate, uh, working with real... Uh, buyers and sellers and uh, renters uh, for like the last 12 years. Um, I do, I put a lot of people in homes in Tinley Park, which I'm very proud of doing. It's uh, Tinley Park is a very easy sale for me because I know what the village offers its people. So, um, but I deal with uh, buyers and I deal with sellers. A lot of agents, what they do is they deal with uh, either one or the other. They may just do a lot of listings or they may just do just buyers. I find that when I, work with buyers, it actually helps me when I go to list homes. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm going out there and I'm showing houses with buyers, they will tell me what they like and what they don't like about the house. And then I keep that in my back of my head. And then when I go in to list the home, I can say, you know what, you need to do this, this, and this, because I know that the buyers don't like this and they like this. Sure. So if you hit on all the spots that the buyers like, chances are your, your house is gonna sell faster and for more money. Well, not to take up too much time with this, but mm. why don't you give us just a couple of examples on some things that are mentioned often by, by buyers? Uh, one of the biggest thing would probably be wallpaper. You know, nobody wants to take the wallpaper off. Yeah. So the buyers don't want to do it. The sellers don't want to do it. So normally what happens is, is that the, the buyers will escalate the cost of it. You know, so if it costs you like uh, $1,500 to hire somebody, a buyer will say, oh my gosh, it's going to be $3,000 to take the wallpaper off. They don't want to mess with it. So the biggest thing is, is take the wallpaper off, paint the walls or wash the walls and get it done with it. Because the buyers nowadays, I mean, they will come up to me and they'll say, you know what? Um, we don't mind doing a little bit of work, but the house they end up with is always a house that doesn't need anything. Sure. And they're willing to pay a little bit more money for that. So get your house, you know, ready to sell and uh, get all the things uh, fixed that you need to. And I, what I do is I usually walk through all the houses prior to me listing it. And I usually give my uh, sellers a list of uh, things that they have to do. Fix this, this, and this. Sure. You know, and if they do that, if they listen to me, chances are they're going to have uh, good results out it, of it. You know, it makes sense, doesn't it, for them to, even if they have to invest a little bit of money to have a professional do it. Yeah. Uh, it's done right, and their house will as you're saying, yeah. sell quicker? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And another thing is clutter. Most people, you know, you walk in and I'll say, well, you need to get rid of the clutter. And they'll say, oh, my gosh, we have clutter? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you do, because people, what they do is they get comfortable in their surroundings. You yeah. know, so I'll say, I'll say, okay, you got to get rid of all of this stuff off the counter. You got to get rid of this, this, and that. You got to, you know, uh, get rid of furniture a lot of times. And they said, well, where, where am I going to put it? I said, well, 
I give them the story about when I sold my house, my own personal house. I uh, took one stall of my, my two-car garage, and I loaded it from the uh, floor all the way up the ceiling with boxes. I completely took everything out of my house that I didn't need. And then I had good results when I sold sure. it because I got rid of all the clutter. Plus the fact when it came time for me to move, everything was in the garage. Boxed. I just, I boxed. I yeah. just backed the truck up there, took the boxes out, put them in the truck, and it made it easy. Because people look in the garage and they don't care about that the garage is loaded with stuff. Sure. It's just a garage, you know, so. It's either a two-car garage or a 50-box garage, uh, yeah. whatever. Well, yeah. they can look at it and say, hey, I can put 50 boxes in this <laughs> yeah, garage. Right. <laughs> well, uh, and you have been doing this a long time, and I know yeah. people who have uh, happily uh, had you work with them, yeah. so uh, and that's a good thing. Yeah, that is a good thing. Yes. Yeah, I get a lot of referrals. So and now you don't just work in Tinley Park, though. Oh, no, no, no. no. I look uh, Tinley, Frankfurt, Orland. I go anywhere. Usually a 45-minute uh, drive north, south, east, or west is where I'll go. I have no problem with that. And then if, if we have to go farther out uh, of that, you know, time frame, I've got a lot of agents that I can refer them to. Okay. That are like me, that like to have fun with the people and, uh, you know, get good it's results. It's a reciprocal type of uh, arrangement? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's a stressful time when you're buying a house and when you're selling it, so I sure. try to make it fun, you know. It's been working out. Well, that's I different. enjoy it. I th that's different from what I have experienced, maybe in the distant past. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna deal, if you're gonna deal with somebody on it, not so much a daily basis, well, somewhat for a while, you want to deal with somebody that's gonna be fun, that you don't mind calling and asking them questions. I always tell the people, you know what? If you got any questions, even if you think it's a silly one, call me because it. it's it's a big investment. You know, they're they're buying a home or they're selling a home, which is gonna be the biggest investment chances are they're gonna make in their lifetime, and they need to be comfortable with that with their decision one way or the other. So. Yeah, they say that there's no such thing as a stupid or a silly question. There, there, there is. It's the one you, you're, you they, don't uh, ask. Those are the ones that I, I share with my friends. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, well. But I never mention names. You kind of walk people through, you assist them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if people have questions about, you know, getting a loan or what are some of the things that they need to do? Uh, usually uh, the, what I tell people as soon as they, they tell me they're looking to buy a house, I get them set up with a mortgage broker right away. I have three or four of them that I, I use and I know that uh, they do a real good job for mm -hmm. my people and that's what the main thing. If I'm going to refer somebody to them, I want to make sure they do a good job for them. And uh, a lot of times because the buying process could take, you know, uh, two, three, four, five, six months. So if you get hooked up with a mortgage broker right away and say that they, you might have uh, uh, something on your credit that if by paying it off, you know, or paying it down, it will increase your score, therefore get you a better rate. Sure. So which is going to be, I mean, when you're looking at borrowing thousands of dollars, you know, any uh, small percentage drop in the rate is going to save you a lot of money. So, and, and we have time in order for the people to do that then. Let's get your, you started on the credit, get that all adjusted, get it down while we're looking for, for homes. Now, I, I've had other realtors on the show and I've never had anybody talk about that. that that's, oh, people need that. That's, that's oh, very good. Yeah, because you want to, I feel I have to help them in every direction I can. You know, and that's the first step as far as doing that. And then we find out, you know, what kind of house we're looking for, area, and, uh, I got I, I hooked them up with the MLS and what the MLS does is I plug in all the information that they want and it automatically will send them all the listing that's available. For the newbie buyers and sellers, MLS multiple listing, listing service, service. Yeah. right. So. It's it's the best I mean a lot of people will go to Zillow, Realtor dot com, the Remax site, but all them other sites feed directly off of the MLS. Mm -hmm. So I'll get a lot of times people call me and say, Hey do you want to go look at this house? They seen it on Zillow. That house has been off the market for, you know, three months. It's not updated. It's not updated. They don't update it. So that's why I hook them directly up with the MLS, and, and it's updated daily. Saves them time. Yeah. All right. Now, do you also work with, um, and I should probably know this, but let's say somebody, not just single-family homes, but oh, yeah. condos, townhouses. Condos, townhouses. What town about houses, renters? If somebody's, renters. Uh, I, I, I work with renters. Okay. Because I feel that, you know, they may be renting a house right now. Another, you know, year, two years down the line, they may be buying something. They're going to give me a call. You know, everybody's got different situations with their housing. So, you know, I'm, I try to be versatile and help out as many people as I can. 
And, and I, I know through your interaction with the Chamber of Commerce, you, you uh, network with many different types of businesses. If people are need a handyman, Oh, yeah. They could certainly get that through the chamber, but you work with people. Yeah, um, I got a really do you really vacuum and do base. windows as well? Uh, on occasion, <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> I do floors. All right. Yeah, yeah, don't we all? Yeah, yeah. But one uh, stat I just ran the other day because I get curious on certain things, and uh, I ran the average rent in Tinley Park, and I air, I ran the average sale price in Tinley Park, and. Uh, figured a payment out with three and a half percent down on buying a home compared to renting mm -hmm. and actual purchasing a home from in last year was about three hundred dollars less than renting really yes wow. which was shocking to me but it's you a know, longer term it, commitment uh, yes but, but but you're looking at buying a home compared to renting and and, and, it, and it comes out to be over three hundred dollars less money by that's buying. remarkable well, because what's happening with the market is, is a lot of people, unfortunately, going through foreclosure, they're losing their homes. They still need a place to, to live, mm -hmm. so they're going into rental properties. So the rental property, uh, inc or rental property rents are going higher, mm. which is they're they're getting more money for rent. Yeah. In the meantime, you know the values are dropping and the interest rates are way down. So. So it's, this is a, a good time for both buyers and sellers. It's definitely probably a seller's market right now. Okay. Uh, I just ran before I came here that uh, in Tinley Park, our uh, average sale price went up $20,000, about 8.5% over the uh, previous year. All right, well, you heard it. If you, weren't think if you weren't thinking about selling your house, this is a good time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it now because and what's happening, what's driving the prices up is lack of inventory. We need inventory. So if you are putting it on a hold for you know for a few years in the past, and you want to move into your dream home, it's probably not going to be as affordable as it is right now with the interest rates. The interest rates are going to go up right now; they're still low, but the values will creep up a little bit too. Well, gas prices are going down, so people, people might got have more a little money. Bit more money. Yeah, and let's hope it stays like that. Just remember, take get rid of the wallpaper. Get rid of the wallpaper. Call unless me. you're, I'll, unless you're, just unless just you're staying I'll, there. Right. Call the chamber office. Ask for me. They'll hook you up with me, and I'll come out and I'll walk through the house, tell you what you need to do, and there you go. And then we'll get you all straightened out. Good information, Bob. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for being a guest for that segment. Sure. Now let's segue into uh, your being co-chair, and actually, Bob has been involved, been involved in the uh, Brew and Vine Fest. Now this is the Tinley Park. Uh, it's it's presented by the Chamber of Commerce, so it's the Tinley Park Brew and Vine Fest, the sixth annual. Bob's yes. been involved from the beginning. Yes. And uh, I've, well, volunteered from the beginning, and um, it's just a tremendous uh, event, um, and we could tell it's enjoyed by thousands of people. Oh, yeah, it's it's grown considerably. I, I can remember the first year that we had it, we we piggybacked with Discover Tinley on yeah. the same day. Yes. You know, we got all the people out of Discover Tinley. We rolled all, we, we changed it all over for the uh, Brew and Vine. We were expecting uh, 800 people. We were hoping to get 800 people there, and we had like 1,500 people that showed up through the door. It was unbelievable. The first time, right. The first year, yeah. That's right. And then next year we expanded. <clears throat> then the next year we expanded, and well, now we have the whole entire... But fortunately, the, uh, the uh, convention center doubled in oh, yeah. its, its size, yes. for, yeah. so that really helped. Yeah, and it's the only, uh, I did a little research on, you know, beer and wine fest in the uh, Midwest area, and ours is the only one that's actually an indoor uh, venue. Everyone else is outside, so you don't have to worry about the weather, it's all climate control, come on out, have a great time. Yeah, free parking. Come on in. Free How parking? many places can you have free parking? Not often anymore. No. You so go we, down, downtown, it's, it costs you an arm and a leg. Yeah. About the cost of our admission is what you're going to pay to park downtown. Just to park. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it, that's something. It's insane. What what a good service uh, that the, the chamber and, and, and the community, uh, the village of Tinley Park as well then, uh, with the convention center, um, an event, a local event for people. And they come from all over. We yeah, know. well, you can remember when we started it, we started it when the economy was, was, was bad, yeah. and we started it because we wanted to have the people come out and enjoy themselves for a night. You know, locally, husband, instead wife, of locally. having to go downtown. Yeah, yeah. We, it was an affordable night out that they could come out and have fun, you know, and forget about worries and, and, and money situations, and, and, and it just snowballed, you know. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, 
we pretty much held the line as far as uh, the the what the cost is for that. Yeah. Um, even with the even with the increases from the convention center, with costs going up, we always tried to you know keep the prices down mm -hmm. to keep it affordable for people. So let's talk about the event. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. Go oh, ahead. You're I mean, you're, you're the okay. co-chair. Uh, it's our sixth year. Uh, we're looking to have, we're increasing uh, our vendors this year. Um, last year we had, we, we figured that we were going to have enough room for everybody mm -hmm. to, to, to handle the crowds. Our mistake, it was still a little bit on the crowded side, so I went back. The first thing I did after the uh, uh, Brew and Vine last year is I looked at the whole layout, moved some stuff around, made the aisles wider. Uh, to accommodate the people. So I'm thinking that we dropped, I think, eight vendors, but we added more brewers and more vintners. So because we had a lack of, uh, a lot of people, vendors were running out of product last year. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know what, let's add some more brewers and some vintners in there. Sure. And hopefully it'll solve that problem of, of product run out. And that's a little more variety too. Oh yeah, yeah. there's no doubt. We got more, we got to, we're getting new uh, vintners and new brewers coming in every day. I know, yeah, because yeah. I'm in the office exactly. and I and I, yeah. and I get the phone the calls and the emails. It, it's just exciting. Yeah. I've been telling people that uh, you know we've been fine tuning it over the years. Oh yeah, it, it's every improved year. every year. Yeah, that's yeah. what makes it fun. Yeah, you know, this year you got to come out this year because we got. Uh, well, I don't know if I should tell all the new things. Should I? Some of it. Okay, we got a uh, a selfie photo booth, which is going to be really cool. Yeah, uh, a lot of the kids are into selfies and stuff like now, so that's going to be good. We're adding a VIP section. Now we we have to mention you said a lot of the kids. Now you have to be twenty one or older. You know, they all they're all kids to me because of my age. So sure, it seemed okay. like it. Yeah, you know, but uh, we got the VIP section. Uh, you can get an hour earlier. Uh, you have an own little section. It's going to be a little comforter area, and we're going to serve uh, beers that are not going to be so much. Um, they're not going to be able to be getting through the main venue. Sure. So now these are craft beer. beers because this is oh, a yeah. craft beer. Yeah. Uh, and this VIP section uh, will be will comfortable seating. It will be open throughout the, the whole uh, event. The but only the VIP can get ticket holders early. can get in there. Correct. To get away from the let's say the the bigger crowd. Yeah, maybe. they can go over there and relax with some of their buddies and stuff yeah. and drink a beer that's not going to be that they can't get at the main venue. And this is, you know, it's called the Brew and Vine, so we're going to have some fine wines there. Beer, wine, and food taste. Yes. From local uh, restaurants, brewers, and vintners. And if that's not entertaining enough... Oh, you're, every, not, you're singing? Every, no, no. Well, I could, but okay. uh, I don't know. That's, we want to sell tickets. Though. I don't charge enough. <laughs> oh, okay. We have uh, entertainment, by, by the way. That's, that's right. Not. Yes, we do. Uh, I think we could probably say who it is, or, or do we want to disclose that just yet? It's Spoken For. All right, well then... But actually, that's the name of the band, Spoken For. Wait, not is that... The, not that it's Spoken For. We Please have one that. minute left in, in this segment, Well, can so... I hold up some information about yeah. where, they, where the, uh, yeah, maybe the they people can, can get uh... tickets from? Can you guys see this okay? Just have to go to our website, TinleyParkBrewAndVineFest.com. It's May 2nd. It's uh, from 5 <clears> to 10. <throat> At the Tinley Park Convention Center. Can I ask a question? Has it been changed to have an ampersand, or is it the word A-N-D, and? Is it spelled wrong? Uh, it should be Tinley Park Brew and yes. Vinefest dot com. You're right, but you'll probably pick it up through here. They will. All right. We have 30 seconds left, so let's use it. Okay. Just well, all right, entertainment. Dancing. Dancing. Um, are we going to have, I, I don't recall, are we going to have some raffles? You're going to have a uh, complimentary glass that you get. Yes. Uh, and you get the 12 taste tickets with admission. VIPs get double that. An opportunity to uh, purchase um, wine. Wine. And beer in some By the cases. bottle or by the, by the case. Growlers. If you want. Growls. Growls. Right. Growlers. Uh, there will be a, what do they call the, I forget what they call it. Um, uh oh. Well, where they could their their stuff can be kept. Okay, that's it. Uh, All right, we we've run out of time. We really got into it. I could have did the whole hour, the whole half hour. We. Could.